it's it's easier maybe without Stephanie. I can I can just uh, I can uh, move more freely. So let's. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, have what's going on. What's going on in the market? What's going on in uh, real estate? There's a couple things I wanted to talk about. So um, the first one is. I just wanted to talk about because I've I've had a, a couple interesting conversations with agents lately as they're panicking because their listing doesn't just fly off the market, and you know, p- people ask me, are we finally seeing a slowdown? Are we seeing a change in the market, or is this the summer thing? Because if you think about it, in July and August, notoriously things slow down a little bit. Um, so yeah, Cheryl just said she's seeing an adjustment to the market here, but things are still selling. Yeah, I, I think it's the same I th- most places in, in our area. I think, I think there's a couple things happening. I think that, I think we're going to see another push in September, October, because you always do. And so I think right now we're dealing with some buyer fatigue of losing in multiple offer situations. Interest rates are going up, so now it even costs you more to buy the house. It's summer, and maybe we just need to go get on a freaking boat and not think about buying a house. I think, there are, I think there's a lot of buyers that are in that boat right now, in literally and figuratively, in that boat. And so what do you do as a listing agent? Um, you know, the other day... Um, I was talking with an agent that was almost panicking, I think, like, um, hey, the, we need to get price reductions. We're, we're not getting showings. We're not, no one's coming. And, and, and you know, if you haven't been in the business a long time, actually, I was just talking to Jessica, who only knows multiple offers. She doesn't know what it's like to uh, uh, have a listing that sits for 90 days. I mean, there was a time where one of my biggest questions prior to listing a house is, can I get away with a six-month listing? Can I, can I write in six months? Because a lot of times 90 days was palatable for most sellers, but six months seemed a little long. These days, I, I don't even care. I just put a date. <laughs> I don't even think of it. I haven't. I, honestly, I can't remember the last time I've really spent any time as I'm drafting that listing agreement thinking about how long it's going to be because I just assume it's going to sell in the first week. And so there are a lot of things that we have to get back to um, in listing a home and thinking about maybe not doing all of your marketing on day one, which, which is a little interesting too, because you definitely still could have multiple offers and maybe we, you want to do that, but you, you better save something for uh, day, you know, week, too, when your seller calls and says, hey, I haven't had a showing in a couple of days. Uh, is everything okay? There was a time when not having a showing for a couple of days was the norm. You know, many homes didn't have a showing every day, let alone seven or ten. And so I think we, I think we need to sit back and, and I'm thinking about maybe doing, that, that, could, that could be a, a meeting in and of itself, but maybe we all talk about um, ideas of some of the things that you do on a longer term listing. What do you do after you've had a listing for a couple of weeks? Um, you know, I, I don't know, some of you probably remember, we used to have marketing calendars. Remember where we'd talk about what we're doing over three weeks or 30 days? Um, only two, so yeah, so Cheryl has one where she has, it's over 500,000 and she's had two showings in the last three weeks. And of course, the sellers are probably calling and blaming Cheryl and she's, the good news for Cheryl is she's experienced this and knows how to deal with the seller. But if you haven't, that is a, that is kind of a difficult phone call. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Well, you're lucky because we have a listing that has had I think zero showings. Well, it's had a couple, but only during open houses. It has show it, people will come to the open houses, but no one is scheduling. And it's because it's it's a high it's a similar thing to what you've got. It's in Mount Lake Terrace and uh, which is not as hot a spot and it's in the seven hundred. It's 
by far the biggest and most expensive house within a half a mile radius. And so it just, you know, there's just not a, all the houses that are selling are in the $500,000 range and this one's in the 700. And so we're dealing with a seller who's kind of panicking about it because um, they had made a contingent offer and you know now their house is barely getting any looks and we priced it super aggressively to begin with even higher because you could and now you're realizing oh wait we've got to be more careful with with pricing even um, because that can be uh, tricky and and thinking about you know you've there's so many things that we've gotten lazy with maybe or it's easy like if you could do a market analysis and if you didn't do the nuance of that little neighborhood and you did a greater neighborhood to find comparables well if your neighborhood is a little less desirable than the neighborhood that the comparables came out of and in my example Lake Forest Park versus Mount Lake Terrace Lake Forest Park is definitely a city that people want to be in they have a cute town center, third place books, and, and it's, it's more sought after, whereas Mount Lake Terrace is kind of where you go if maybe you're priced out of Lake Forest Park. And so there's a lot of this kind of thing. And so I think that as the market stabilizes and as we have to get into um, doing our job longer and working with sellers and setting expectations and and all of that. Um. It's